Hi everyone, this is Anna Finch from finchpresspublishing.com. Um, today's video is actually a vlog about what I'm actually currently working on. Now, in my first video I mentioned that um, I was in the, I had finished writing my third draft for my nano novel. <laughs> um, I'm still waiting for feedback from my critique partner so I can edit it some more before sending it to a developmental editor just in case there are any plot holes or things that we've missed um, regarding the overall storyline um, in the novel um, as I want to make sure that it's the best that I can make it before handing it to an editor. Um, just a bit about the novel. Um, it's actually inspired by The Little Mermaid, the original fairy tale, not the Disney version, although I do love the Disney version of The Little Mermaid. Um, it actually, there's also some inspiration regarding the storyline um, that I got from a text, a film text that we were, that I was actually teaching to year nine students. So these are middle year students in America. Um, they're about 14, 15 in some cases. Um, so the film text um, was actually The Giver and we were comparing it to um, The Hunger Games because in Victoria or in Victoria we are um, one of the, part, as part of the curriculum we are asked to teach dystopian texts and The Giver and The Hunger Games are some of the more popular choices. Um, the Giver, I, I had read the book um, and I actually enjoy it. The book, the book's interesting. It's engaging. Um, the film is as well. Um, and watching that film and seeing the reaction from my students made me enjoy it more. And it also prompted me to think about what would happen if something similar happened in maybe a fantasy setting. Maybe the characters were a little bit different. Maybe the rules were a little bit different. But I wanted to play with it storyline where the hero has or the main character has to go on a journey um an emotional journey rather than a literal one um like the hobbit um but i want to play around with that idea so that was actually what pushed me to um start planning and it's also because i knew my students were going to be writing short stories as their assessment for the unit uh, they were going to write, be writing their own dystopias and I wanted to write alongside them so they could see how it worked so they could see that yeah th this is relevant people can do, do do this um so I wanted to get them engaged with the writing if they could see me writing then maybe they'd be a bit more engaged um now there was two months between the essay and the creative writing for the students um but i actually found that i had planned the novel i knew what i was going to write i was going to write it um and it wasn't until i participated in nanowrimo that i actually sat down and wrote consistently and actually finished it um it also helped that my students knew that I was doing NaNoWriMo and that I was actually writing a novel. So they would all, they would come up to it and ask me, Miss, how's your novel going? So um, I did want to say I hadn't written anything, <laughs> especially considering I had to, I, I was trying to encourage them to write. So I didn't want to say, yeah, I didn't feel like <laughs> that, I, that I didn't write or that I didn't feel like writing. So... I wanted to make sure I had something new to say to them every day. So I pushed through it, wrote it. Um, I'd actually finished the first draft. Started December. So first week of December, I'd actually finished the first draft. A um, couple of days after NaNoWriMo ended, I did meet the NaNoWriMo goal. Um, exceeded it, but I hadn't finished the first draft, which was actually my overall goal in that month. But I did finish it soon after, so I was still happy. Um, my brother was actually my first 
beta reader for this. I know that some writers say not to have a relative give you feedback or to be beta readers or editors, um, but asking my brother to do this actually helped me. Um, he's not the biggest fan of The Little Mermaid. Can be um, harsh when it comes to feedback, so if it's not good, he will tell me to my face, this isn't good. Um, not as polite as that either. I knew that if I gave it to him that he would tell me honestly what didn't work and what wasn't good um, and would actually, he would actually tell me how to fix it. Um, and being my first beta reader helped. Even some of my students actually read while I was writing they read bits and pieces and they gave me feedback. Surprisingly they would tell me oh what happens if this happened? Um, so they would give me feedback on it. So getting my brother to read my first draft, give me feedback, um, and would is helpful. I was able to do my second draft using that, and I changed a couple of things and fixed my grammar <laughs> in some places. Um, so when I receive my feedback from my other beta reader or my critique partner, um, I can make now my fourth draft. It was supposed to be my third, but my fourth draft because I ran through my second draft after using my brother's edits and feedback to through um, Grammarly uh, and putting it through Grammarly was a shock. It was a shocker. I could see all my grammar and sentence mistakes clearly. Um, so I ended up changing stuff that I didn't even find um, or that my, me and my brother didn't find. Um, which, considering I'm an English teacher, <laughs> um, was surprising. It was surprising how much errors I had. Um, it wasn't terrible, but it was surprising how many errors there were. Um, so I edited it and now I'm on my third draft, so, um, yeah, hopefully the feedback I get from my critique partner means that I can improve it a lot more, not just grammar-wise, but story-wise. Uh, so I'll, after getting the feedback, um, I'll put it through again continue editing probably do it a couple more times so probably after my fourth draft I'll send it to a developmental editor um, don't know who exactly I'll be sending it to still finding out people prices um, but I'll send it to a developmental editor first so I can fix the story structure and get the story story structure as polished as I can make it before fixing any of the other mistakes. Um, I don't think I will send it for a manuscript evaluation. I had planned to originally, um, but I had actually talked with people that I, people in the age bracket that this book's for or that I'm um, make the target audience is written for I'd spoken with people that are in that group and pitched their idea I'm like hey what do you think about this um and the feedback has been positive for the majority of it um so I know the concept itself is marketable um for the age group which is young adult um so I know that there's a market so I've spoken, spoken with students because I teach. I teach kids in that age bracket. And I ask them, hey, what do you think about this? And kids, especially kids that age, are very honest. If they don't like it, they will tell you to your face. They don't like it. Um, so just pointing an idea to them um, has helped. So the manuscript assessment isn't necessary for me at that stage um 
maybe from like the other books that I'm working on, um, but not for this particular novel. Um, humanities teacher. Um, so my language skills are very high when it comes to grammar, spelling, um, and like paragraph structure. So things to do with literacy is fairly high. Um, but I still plan on sending it to an editor uh, because I know that I will have missed things and I have missed things and I noticed that after I put it put my second draft through Grammarly and this is after a short break so because I'm used to seeing a particular type of text I may not notice that something's wrong with it I know I've actually missed things my brother's actually pointed to a word and this is in my first draft Pointed to it, I looked at it, did not recognize what was wrong with it. Told me to read the sentence, still didn't recognize it. Took me five minutes, five minutes to realize that I used the adverb instead of the verb. So the present, I think, present verb. To describe an action that was happening I didn't realize for five minutes that I used the wrong word um, and I my brother picked up on me using the wrong version of a word um, so on my phones um, mixing them up and I know there's things in there that I still haven't picked up from. So sending it to an editor, so a professional editor, not just a developmental editor, but a copy editor. So this is the ones who go through the work line by line and edit spelling, grammar, fluency, things like that. Sending it to an editor <laughs> is a must, um, especially if you're self-publishing because even though my literacy skills are fairly high because it's something that I've been working on for a long period of time my brain is used to what I'm seeing on the screen and I don't pick up the little mistakes so I have to send it to an editor um, so I'm, this is because I want to make sure that what I publish is the best I can possibly make it I want it as polished as possible um, because this is something I want this is something that I enjoy and I want people to enjoy it and if it's not edited properly then it won't be <laughs> enjoyable to read so um, so with the way the process is going for this particular level it's going to be going fast so um, at the moment I'm on track to getting this published November um, 2020 I would like to get it published in October 2020 but I'm setting the goal for November um, as and this may change to October maybe later maybe sooner depends on how fast I'm able to work through the publishing process in order to produce a good piece of work so overall I'll get it published by November um, but while I am editing this novel I'm also planning like three others um, I've finished planning oh correction four others I've finished planning three of them one of them is just an idea and I'm probably going to put it as my NaNoWriMo novel for next year um, but three of them I've been planning one of them is um, a novel I'm going to be working on on my own um, and I want to try and yeah um, it's a novel I'll be working on my own Beauty and the Beast inspired story um, the other two I'm actually working on um, creating together with my brother 
so my brother is going to be co-writing it with me. Um, so it's an assassin. It's a book about an assassin. Um, don't want to give too much away yet because I haven't even got my first draft done for any of those. Um, so I've been working on them. There's other three or the other of two of the four um, other writing projects. Um, this past month and I haven't been writing every day every couple of days um, because of my busy schedule but I want to try and stay in the habit of writing consistently even if it's not every day every couple of days or once a week at least having something written once a week and being able to re meet my goals I'm actually behind on my own personal goals regarding those novels um, but again, I'm still working on them, and it's not those other novels aren't going to be published next year. Um, they're still work in progress. Um, so that's all. Uh, <laughs> that's the end of the video. I hope you found. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I plan on uploading videos Wednesdays and Saturdays. Again, may change depending on my schedule. Um, but I'll try to make it as consistent as possible. If you found this video interesting, please press the like button below. And if you want to be notified of when I upload videos, press the subscribe button. Okay. Um, if you're interested, I also have some merchandise that I'm selling through Teespring. The link is um, on my channel, um, as well as there's also a link on my author website. Um, I sell some tote bags, phone covers, there's also t-shirts that are for sale. Um, so if you're interested in listening or if you want to just check it out, you can just press the link. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.